Welcome back everybody to another Sabaton reaction video. I hope everybody had an amazing Christmas holiday. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and hopefully we all come through uh, this season and this time of uh, being isolated uh, and come out better on the other side. Uh, so uh, I want to dive into another Sabaton video today and I've had a lot of uh, folks suggesting that I check out No Bullets Fly. I understand the story behind this one. I had heard it and read about it before. Uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about it up front because I believe that it pretty well is self-explanatory. Uh, in this video, I watched just a little bit of it just to make sure I had a sense of what I was looking at. Uh, and there's a, a personal connection to this story for my family. My wife's grandfather, who I knew very well and is one of the greatest men I've ever known, uh, passed away seven years ago. He was actually a ball turret gunner on a B-17. Uh, flying missions out of Kim Bolton, England. He was uh, in a bomb group that dropped more uh, tonnage of bombs on Germany than any other bomb group in the entire Air, uh, 8th Air Force. Uh, so I, I know uh, my own family's experience with uh, the danger of these bombers and, and what these crews faced every day. So, uh, And I also want to say, too, that uh, I think this is a good example to understand that uh, in war, it's not as simple as good guy versus bad guy. The other side's evil and we're good. Um, you know, so we'll talk a little bit more about that, but let's go ahead and dive into this video. This is No Bullets Fly. It's December the 20th, 1943, and in the freezing air, high above Germany, 2nd Lieutenant Charles Charlie Brown is at the controls of his B-17F, the old pub. At 11.30, approaching the target of the focke Wolf plant near Bremen, the pub is rocked as four explosions go off right in front of the B-17. A cry comes across the intercom. We're hit. In the hexagon, a huge yeah, hole had been made. An icy cold wind was being blown inside, making freezing conditions for the crew. Engine two had been hit, and co-pilot Spencer Pinky Luke let out an expletive as he noticed a huge hole in the right wing. Releasing their bombs over the factory, the crew turned to the north, planning to head over the coast, then turn west for home. With one engine out and engine four now faulty, the pub started to fall back from the formation with another damaged plane. Sam Blackie Blackford in the ball turret watched as it disappeared into a cloud bank. There was an orange flash in the cloud. Bandits, Eggy shouted, as five BF-109s oh. streaked from the cloud bank. Then another cry. Bandits, as eight FW 190s were spotted in formation. BF 109s as Measure Schmidt. Sergeant uh, Bertram Frenchy Coulomb in the turret shot the 190 out of the sky. The navigator, Al Doc Sadik, took out the second. Pinky reported that engine three had been hit. That left just one engine at full power. The BF 109s attacked the pub from behind, swarming all over. But due to the cold wind running through the pub, most of the guns were frozen. In a turn now, the pub was repeatedly hit, taking extreme damage and killing the tail gunner. A shell penetrated and exploded near the waste gunners, injuring the crew and creating a huge hole. How this the thing was still in the air was taken me. out, and the pub spun towards the ground. With the crew unconscious due to lack of oxygen, the B-17 fell for four miles. Charlie started to come around and grabbed the controls, pulling back as the plane continued to fall. 5,000 feet, 4,000 feet, 3,000 wow. feet. Wow. Just moments from hitting the earth, the plane pulled up, did almost scraping plane? the trees as it did. And here's where we get into the story, through the song. Look again. I see the enemy in the 
So, yeah, like I was starting to say at the beginning, um, and I think if you talked to a lot of the um, the veterans of the war, I know in talking to uh, my own family members who were veterans of World War II, uh, there was never the sense that they hated the Germans that they were fighting against. I think most of them recognized that guy was fighting for his country, uh, just like I was fighting for mine. Um, and, and, you know, so often what the the governments of countries are fighting over and what's happening at that level doesn't necessarily apply to the common soldier. You know, the the average German fighter pilot uh, of a Messerschmitt 109 uh, had nothing to do with the Holocaust, had nothing to do with the decisions to invade these other countries, uh, the things that were happening at the, the senior levels of the Nazi government. Just like the average American had nothing to do with the decisions that were being made. He was fighting for the guy next to him. He was doing the right thing. And, and I love... Um, There was an interview with Shifty Powers, who was a member of uh, Easy Company of the 506 Parachute Infantry, who was part of uh, Band of Brothers. And he said, you know, I often thought about those guys that we were fighting against. He said, "Uh, that guy and I might have had a lot in common. We might have been friends in other circumstances. We might have both liked to hunt and fish. And, you know, he, he probably wasn't any different than me. And I think that this German pilot, I wish I knew his name. And I wonder if it's I wonder if his name is even known. I'd be curious about that. Uh, he understood that, that these guys were not personally his enemy. And there was no honor in shooting down men who couldn't fight back. And so, I, boy, I just give all the credit in the world to that German pilot. What what an honorable thing to do. And, and I'm sure that the American uh, members of this B-17 crew recognized that and had equal respect for him. I would guess the cross he deserved would be the uh, icon that he would get to put on his plane for getting a victory in the air. Just shoot down. So holy cow, I just I looked because I saw the K on the tail of this gunner, and so I had to look it up because that seemed really familiar to me. This plane was in the 379th Bomb Wing, which is the exact same unit that my wife's grandfather was in out of Kim Bolton, England. This was one of their planes, the 527th Bomb Squadron. So I did look it up, and Franz Stigler was the name of the uh, the pilot uh, associated with this story. Uh, and apparently the two pilots of the, the bomber and the, the German Messerschmitt became friends later on, uh, and they met uh, something like on the 50th anniversary of when this happened, and they stayed friends the rest of their lives, and they both passed away in 2008. Uh, what an incredible story, and now to find out that this was the same unit that my wife's grandfather was in just makes this even more special to me. This is amazing. I want to watch the, re- the rest of this. glad to know that both of these pilots survived the war and got to know each other afterwards. Bet he got chewed out by his superiors though. that must have had on these guys the next time they went up. That is so cool. 
The story was kept secret until 1986, when Brown started the search for the oh, German okay, so pilot we are gonna hear about who had shown mercy on that December day all those years ago. In 1990, Brown received a letter from a man named Stigler, who was living in Canada. Stigler explained that he had been the pilot of the German fighter who had escorted Ye Old Pub. This video is of their first meeting. Oh, wow, this is cool. Franz, what were your feelings when you met again for the first time? I was so happy as you met that I dropped him. That is awesome. I love it. What's the beat? Yeah, big time. Well, that's what happened. The, the fact that he risked his life really in many ways, and I wrote him in a letter. I said, if you uh, if you made a habit of feeling sorry for Palmer Cruz, <laughs> flag up alongside them, I am sure that you were shot down many times. But it was a not only the audacity that he came up to us and uh, then recognizing the threat. If someone had seen him and reported him. It could have been a death sentence. Yeah. yeah. Franz gifted Charlie a book, and inside the inscription read, In 1940, I lost my only brother as a night fighter. What? On the 20th of December, four days before Christmas, I had the chance to save a B-17 from her destruction. A plane so badly damaged, it was a wonder that she was still flying. <laughs> the pilot, Charlie Brown, is for me as precious as my brother was. Wow. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> Your brother, Franz. In 2008, within a few months of each other, the two firm friends went on their final journey. Franz Stigler never got the Knight's Cross, but as he always said, he got something better. Yeah, for sure. Well, there's more to this story. a relative. I bet mom's the son of one of them. Or the daughter. Hi, my name is Jovita Ten Stiegler. Oh. I would like to thank Sabaton and your song, No Bullets Fly. Because of this, the story of my father will live on. See you on your next concert tour. That's Stay fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen, and again, thank you. Wow. That is so cool. I, I don't have anything else to say about that. That is phenomenal. That is amazing. I, I love that story. I love that they put it to a song. I hope you guys will hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you again soon with another story real soon. Thanks for watching.